Hi, my name is Greg Olson, and I'm the director of the New York State Office for Aging. I could not be more pleased to be joined by these two gentlemen who I had the privilege and honor of meeting at our state conference a couple of months ago. I'd like to introduce the film's director, Stu Maddox, and the film's producer, Joe Applebaum. Welcome, gentlemen. What made you decide to do this film? Mm. Well, um, you know, uh, Greg, thanks so much. We uh, actually started this well before COVID. I mean, we started this, we came up with the idea in late 2018 and started in 2019, to be honest. And by the time COVID hit, we were about 90% finished with the film and then obviously COVID hit. But um, we, we first put out something, we wanted to know what's the next project we should get involved with. So we asked uh, uh, like 3000 professionals uh, we put out a survey. What's the next big hidden thing coming over the horizon that nobody's talking about? And this is back in 2018 and people said loneliness and isolation. So as we started getting into doing our research and getting into uh, the project, Stu and I, who are not only business partners but life partners, realized that we were lonely and isolated. We were part of this community. And so that actually made it more uh, imperative uh, and important for us to tell the story of what's going on. Yeah, and I think that all the people who are sharing their stories in this film have that imperative feeling about trying to break the stigma of saying, I'm lonely, because that's really been the tough part about all this. And we're really excited to show you the first four minutes of the film right now, which kind of introduces you to the, to the issue, but also the people we've been following who've opened their lives to us. Here, so here's that. statue on our right hand side. This is put here in 1980. So the statue here on our right hand side. Loneliness isn't just some mildly unpleasant some state. Some researchers are now calling it an epidemic. It's affecting our health. Heart disease, diabetes, depression. Some researchers say it can be bad for you smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Lonely workers are bad for the economy, and it's even affecting who people vote for. Everybody wants to feel some connection. When the suicide rate spikes, what do you think the cause is? It's loneliness. Experts have found we need contact. We now have hundreds of studies, millions of participants. People are coming up with solutions in their lives and their communities. This week, Britain became the first country to appoint a minister for loneliness. A new study says most Americans feel lonely, and the group most agree. You know, Maria von Tropp said, let's start at the very beginning. Uh, let's see, well, my name is Tony Westbrook, I'm 59 years old. And everybody who knows me thinks I'm upbeat, outgoing, and how could I feel lonely? We're all actors. Hi, um, my name is Kalud. I am 17 years old. My whole life I felt lonely and alone, up until like two years ago. just the two of us. That's not what we are as people. We aren't just one relationship. You know, surf on this person's but We might be able to network with somebody. Loneliness is a huge aspect of just surviving here from day to day. Mrs. Hill, you ever feel lonely? Yes. Very yeah. lonely. Yeah. Makes it worse living 
where we live. I spent the best part of two years nursing my wife at the end and when it was all over I knew hardly anybody. Now it's rolling. Anything you want to say? Uh, I'm 77 years old. I've been in bed now five years. I know what it is to be lonely but I get out of it real quick. How do you do that? I mean, the isolated and lonely are the invisible in this world. Who is speaking up for them? And who is seeing them? That is an equity issue. That is an access issue. That is, that is giving priority to people who are able-bodied and able to access technology and streets and to be able to get out of their house. That is absolutely an equity issue. Makes sense. I don't feel strongly about it at all. The timing is really impeccable. Right? I mean, there's no question about that. And what really resonated with me, and I'm fortunate enough to have gotten the sneak peek before the sneak peek, which will be tonight at 7 on the East Coast and 4 p.m. on the West Coast, is it really isn't just older people. And you shared your story a little bit. And during our conference, that had almost a 1,000 people. The stories that you showed all over the world of all ages really resonated because this is not, again, an older person issue. So who are you trying to reach with, uh, with this sneak peek film tonight? Well, Greg, what's been interesting, especially after meeting you and spending time with folks there at that particular conference was that, uh, yeah, this is, this is for everyone. And we find that younger people are particularly vulnerable to loneliness and isolation. There's a lot of research around that. Uh, folks who are making transitions in life. Anytime we like move to college, we start a family, we move to the suburbs, we have a, a change in you know a, a divorce or a death in the family. These things kind of diminish our support group. But what we found being there with you is that aging service providers have already been doing this work for some time. So they're the natural go-to organizations for kind of a little bit of leadership and inspiration on this. So. I don't know, Greg, did you feel that as well? Like that the, the aging service uh, sector is really kind of got a lot of work to do, but is also kind of ahead of everybody else? Yeah, I do. And I think your point's well taken. A lot of those kind of stories resonated with me as somebody who had as my kids 50% of the time, seeing what the pandemic has done to them. But you're right. I mean, these are issues we have been dealing with for 30 years. Um, started a couple special projects prior to the pandemic, um, but this really got exacerbated during the pandemic. So again, you know, sometimes the stars line up and it's fortuitous, which is why we're so, you know, pleased to have you guys on and help you promote this because this is a, 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 an all age, um, all sector society across the world issue. This really does affect every single person if they stop and think about it. And, um, and I think, I think there's a, a, a natural uh, inclination with a lot of people to think, oh, I'm not lonely. I don't get lonely. I'm good. You know, uh, it, it's, it's this other group that gets lonely. Or here's something that was really interesting. People in a relationship such as ourselves uh, and many, anybody else who's married, uh, we had a lot of people say, how could you possibly be lonely? You're married. And I think anybody that is in a long-term relationship would, you know, quietly or a loud chuckle at that because you need, you know, all kinds of stimulation from, from other sources uh, to be fulfilled and to be happy in life. But you know, Greg, what's been the common denominator is that everybody um, has had to start with like accepting that uh, they can be lonely. There, there's some people that believe they've never been lonely before. And I, I just kind of, after doing this project, find that uh, even more hard to believe because uh, it's just a natural part of, of, our, of our makeup to have some loneliness. I think the, it's the chronic loneliness that has really taken off through the pandemic and even before where we feel lonely, say two or three times a week. And it's, 
you know, becoming so common now that people are coming up with some pretty innovative solutions in their lives and also, you know, in communities. And, and this that has really taken off through the pandemic and even before where we feel lonely, say, two or three times a week. And it's, you know, becoming so common now that people are coming up with some pretty innovative solutions in their lives and also, you know, in communities and, and like what you're doing there. So. Yeah, and don't give away uh, the sneak peek. That's what we want people to watch. So again, this is going to be tonight, 7 p.m. on the East Coast, 4 p.m. on the West Coast. If, if people cannot make uh, this tonight, how can they view it after tonight? So we're, we're showing the entire first act of the film tonight. And there will be an opportunity for, we want the audience to get involved. Uh, right now we're finishing up the editing. So audience participation is going to make us make a better film. So we want that. Even if it's negative criticism. If you can't make it tonight, it's not a problem. You can go to uh, the uh, URL that's in this post that's uh, being used across all the social media uh, that's going to be displayed. And uh, the recording of it will be available for 72 hours. And Greg, can I just mention that on, on the behalf of everybody here on this team, it's been great to take this film out into the world now and have meaningful partnerships with, with organizations like yours and, and the folks there on the ground in New York so that we can do this together. Like this is the start of a, the next thing. It really is. So It is. Well, gentlemen, can't thank you enough. Look forward to the preview tonight. Stu Maddox, Joe Applebaum, all the lonely people. Join us.